Okay, so we got a kind of lackluster trading picture on the first day of 2024, but that, of course, is after the big run-up, especially in U.S. stocks in the latter part of last year. You can see the S&P down about 1% today, Toronto off about one half of 1%. Now, there are these ongoing predictions and debates as to whether America will get a soft landing or a recession or even deflation. Our guest says a big risk in 2024 could be high inflation, maybe even hyperinflation. Let's bring in Michelle Schneider, Chief Markets, Chief Strategist at MarketGage.com. Michelle, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Happy New Year. Thanks. Same to you. Have a great 2024. Inflation, could we even see something resembling hyperinflation in 2024? Well, let's let's substitute the word hyperinflation for super cycle of inflation, because I think that more aptly describes what's happening. And what we're seeing right now is a bit of an aberration in that the commodity prices have come up so hard, so fast. And right now, even though we have a lot of geopolitical situations that can change that, certain aspects of those commodities were definitely scheduled to come down because post-COVID, that was a very unique situation, while others, though, still are extremely vulnerable. So if we go back to history a little bit here, mm -hmm. we study what happened in the 70s. From 1975 to 1977, we had commodity prices go down from a CPI that was at about 10 all the way down to two. And then in 77, as we know, we started the ascent because things changed. And that's really, I think, the X factor. What could change? Well, first of all, any misstep by the Fed being way too dovish could goose inflation. The dollar could be a catalyst, especially as pricing in dollars is becoming less popular, not more popular. Number three is we also obviously not only the Middle East situation, mm -hmm. but we have a reignited Putin he is definitely feeling better about the fact that maybe Western money is not going to be as flowing as it's been to the Ukraine. So the bombing has, has gone there. And then, of course, supply chain and weather, all these things. Mm -hmm. If We don't know exactly if or when, but we do know that if history rhymes, there is anything could go back into inflating these numbers of inflation and catching a lot of people, including the Fed, potentially off guard. Let's put up that chart again, because it's really striking. So in the 70s, inflation went up. They thought they had it licked. But then it came back in an ugly way, and we got up to about 14% briefly around 1980. Yeah, and I, I certainly am not trying to scare people. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying that in this year in particular, where a lot of people are predicting certain things based on statistical edges that they've had, like, for example, election years have been bullish except for a couple of times. When you close on all-time highs, the probability of continuing up is greater. All of these things were, were that are in place also could very easily switch, and herd mentality can go from one arena of, yeah, everything's cool, to the other, which is things aren't so cool and the price of goods are going to start going way up again. And I think just people need to be aware before they get too complacent. What about gold, Michelle? Uh, presumably, if, heaven forbid, we get a return to high inflation, will, will that be good for gold? It's never simple, is it? Because we tend to push up interest rates as well. Exactly. Well, gold has been very bullish, even with this rally that we've seen, because gold is really where people are going to as a flight of safety. And so if they're using it as a flight of safety in case things go worse, from bad to worse in terms of what's happening geopolitically, it would certainly be goosed up even further if hyperinflation or even the super cycle of inflation, where we just saw a 40% drop in prices, starts to turn around. We could easily see gold through $2,100. I don't know, where does it stop? 3,000, 3,400? We know it's an extremely emotional trade. But one thing I will say is that's not the only hedge anymore with Bitcoin. So I mm -hmm. do believe that if we do see a massive run in gold prices, it will be relatively short-lived and maybe even the end of an era. That's interesting. So enjoy it while you can. You see your message exactly. to the gold bulls. Yeah, yeah. A good message for life in general, I guess. Um, basic metals. Um, there's an ETF, that, for example, that trades on the TSX XME. What is your take, though, on these basic industrial metals? 
Well, and this is where the, the inflation narrative is so confusing, it, it, or I should say complicated, because we know that there are shortages of copper. We're seeing a huge run, in, obviously, in uranium. But even steel, uh, aluminum, tin, some of these industrial metals have not come down in price very much while we're going through our disinflation period. And a lot of them are needed not just for basic EVs and things like that, but for infrastructure. And China, which of course now is stating more demand as they start to inflate their own economy with QE, all of these could put further upward pr price pressures in these industrial metals. And XME, as long as it holds kind of where it's been trading between, let's say, $58 and $60 a share, that could mean that that could go much higher uh, along with as all the things we just laid out, the possibility of inflation coming back. One stock that's on your radar is Abvi, the pharmaceutical player. Now, uh, you think it fits a couple of themes. Pharma, obviously demographics is uh, an advantage there, but also cannabis. I didn't know Abvi had put its toe in there. Well, that's one of the things that got me really interested in the company. They're using medical cannabis, so, uh, and they're using it in their own research. And so that kind of got me thinking that if you're getting a big pharma company like them to uh, possibly put pressure on the government to mm -hmm. end not only the fact that it's not federally legal, but also some of the uh, interbanking situations that we have that also is illegal, that would be interesting because we know lobbyists can be very powerful. Um, but the other reason why I like Abby actually has nothing to do with cannabis. I also found out that in terms of the um, cosmetic space, they are the ones that make a lot of the fillers. And I think this year we may see a switch from all about we, you know, we being we took care of our family, we, we traveled more, we ate out more, to all about me, where people say, you know what, this year I want to feel better about myself. I like that. From we... To me, yeah. You know what, <laughs> Michelle, it, this is going to be the year of saying no for me. Steve Jobs used to advise, he used to say, say no far more often than you say yes, because of course, when you say yes to things, you give up uh, opportunities. Uh, yeah, there's an infinite opportunity cost every time you say yes. Uh, one last idea um, here, solar. The solar stocks, of course, have been hurt. We've seen soaring insulation costs. It's harder to finance projects. Do you see any kind of a turnaround for the solar industry this year? I do believe that from an environmental standpoint, we could see them come back to life this year. So we've been watching stocks like First Solar, TAN, which is the ETF in solar. It does seem also that the current government, and especially as we're getting into this election year, are very pro uh, solar energy and alternative energy. So again, these are the areas to watch. Uh, obviously, you always have to know risk factors when you get involved in anything, mm -hmm. but I do see it making a comeback and not necessarily traditional energy as so many people are predicting.